You might have heard that a tight hip flexor will cause the low back to go in extension and that will cause low back pain. And that you should stretch out your hip flexors like this to help decrease the low back pain. And while tight hip flexors, or if it's part of the lower cross syndrome, is usually given as an explanation for why someone is experiencing low back pain, does the research actually support that as a cause of low back pain? Let's dive into some of the research. But before we look at if tight hip flexors cause low back pain, we should look at how we actually assess it. Because if we're gonna say that somebody has tight hip flexors, we should know if they actually have tight hip flexors. The most common way that this is assessed is using a modified Thomas test, where somebody will lay on a table and they'll bring one leg up to the chest with the other leg hanging off the table and we'll look at how the thigh sits and that gives us some indication of if the hip is still in flexion, which would indicate a tight hip flexor, or if it's able to extend, which then we would assume that the hip flexor is not an issue. But a study by Andrew Vygotsky found that this wasn't a valid test unless we control for the pelvis. And what we mean by that is that if somebody's laying on the table and they bring this leg into flexion, so bringing their knee to their chest, their pelvis can go into a posterior pelvic tilt, which would then limit how much hip extension we're getting on this side, which would give us an invalid reading. Conversely, if somebody doesn't bring this leg all the way into flexion and they're actually in an anterior pelvic tilt, they might get more hip extension on this side, again, giving us inaccurate information. And all this to say that the test that is commonly used to assess whether somebody has hip flexor tightness or not is a little bit spotty unless we control for all of these factors, which in clinical practice, they might not all be accounted for. So we're already having a hard time establishing if somebody has hip flexor tightness. And so that's gonna be hard if we don't actually know if they have hip flexor tightness or not, that that would be the cause of their low back pain. But let's say that we're able to identify if somebody has tight hip flexors or not. With how common that explanation is that tight hip flexors cause low back pain, there must be a plethora of articles out there to support that. But, well, I was only able to find two articles on this. The first study was by Annalisa Helsing, and she published this article in 1988. So this is by no means new research. But what she did was she followed 999 military personnel over four years. And she looked at both hip flexor tightness as well as hamstring tightness. And what this study found was that there was no correlation between either hip flexor tightness or hamstring tightness in relation to low back pain. The second study was by Delane Bach, and this study was published in 1985, so an even older study. And what they looked at was muscular tightness in runners compared to non-runners. And what this study found was, again, that there was no correlation between muscular tightness and low back pain. So of the two articles that we actually have looking at muscular tightness and low back pain, they actually found that there was no correlation. Yet here we are, with this common uh, explanation that hip flexor tightness causes low back pain, but there's actually no research to actually support that. So what do we do with this information? Is it okay to stretch the hip flexors? Is it not okay to stretch the hip flexors? Well, it's okay to stretch the hip flexors. There's nothing detrimental from stretching the hip flexors. And in fact, if stretching the hip flexors helps to alleviate the low back pain, then by all means, we should use that hip flexor stretch to decrease low back pain. The point is, is that we don't have to be super focused on lengthening that hip flexor or changing an anterior pelvic tilt because the research doesn't support that that is a cause of low back pain. And this actually gives us some more treatment options, especially for those who aren't responding to the hip flexor stretch. So we can do other exercises, which actually might be more beneficial for somebody with low back pain, including stabilization exercises. Thank you for watching this video on hip flexor tightness and low back pain. I hope that you found this information useful. If you did, go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up. It helps me with the YouTube algorithm. If you want to see more of my content, hit the subscribe button over to the side and hit the bell icon as well to be notified of future videos. I'll see you in the next video.